Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. I hope you're all having an amazing day. We're going to kick things off with AMD, as MSI have confirmed that there will be a new Agisa version launching in November. And this Agisa version will contain over 100 bug fixes and improvements compared to ABBA that we're currently using. Furthermore, MSI have confirmed that AMD have plans for several versions of Agisa beyond this one, and each one, of course, will have various improvements and performance fixes. So version 1004 shall launch in November, but unfortunately, the list of fixes has not been confirmed by either AMD or MSI. In fact, if you ask AMD regarding what changes there are between one version of a Gisu and the other, they're actually pretty cagey about it. And there are some reasons behind that, including security, because obviously one of the purposes of a Gisu is, well, security. Uh, so unfortunately, we don't know what the changes are. Now, I did ask an AMD representative in the UK what uh, changes there would be perhaps to boost frequency, whether we're going to see more aggressive boosting. But I was told by the representative that he did not have that information right now. He would try to get back to me. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there were further improvements and fixes to Agisa. And don't forget that this will not exactly coincide in terms of time, but not too far off from the new Windows update, which is designed to uh, push workloads towards favoured cores. I suspect that this will not only benefit AMD and, of course, the boost behavior of their CPUs, but also the upcoming Cascade Lake X CPUs from Intel, as they have Turbo Boost Free technology, which basically means that up to four CPU cores, if there's, like, lighter workloads, can uh, boost to higher clock frequencies, so it will definitely improve their performance as well. It's going to be fascinating to see what happens with this, and I know some people do get frustrated with the sheer number of uh, releases of a Gisa, um, and that is a fair point. But then again, you also have to take into account that AMD are basically kind of dealing even with a new architecture and a new platform. And so it's kind of understandable that things are somewhat in flux. And as long as things get fixed, I'm all for it. I think it's going to be very interesting, though, to see what the changes are for November. And this also, of course, matches up to the date that we're going to see the 3950X launch, along with the third-generation Threadripper processors. Oh, and Intel's Cascade Lake X also coincides with the same launch window. Speaking, however, of Intel, there are several very interesting things that have been happening on Team Blue's side. And we're going to start things off with the graphics. Raj Akudori, who is, of course, head now over at Intel Graphics, he was the former head of RTG, has made a very interesting post on his personal Twitter page, but also added uh, the Intel Graphics division as well. And it was of a number plate... And, well, the number plate says, Think XC, but if you also take a look at the top of the number plate, there's June, then California, and then 2020. Now, obviously, the California isn't so important because it represents the state that Raj Akodori has registered the vehicle. For those who don't know, he works in uh, San Francisco. Uh, but Think XC... Well, there's a couple of ways you could take this. So the first way you can take this is, well, it's just Raja Kodori being really happy with the progress that they've made with XC, the architecture, and obviously the, uh, the man hours that the whole team have put into this must just be crazy, and he's just really happy with how the project's coming along, and so on and so on. So it's kind of just like him having a little bit of uh, fun on the side and just being really proud of the project. There is, however, another way you could take this because, well, the date of June would be a little sooner to what we anticipated Intel to launch XC, the discrete GPUs, but potentially they could be further along on the project than perhaps some people thought. So maybe think XC June 2020 
means either the launch of XC or some type of announcement, maybe a series of product SKUs. It's also possible because XC, you can almost say is synonymous with Gen 12. XC and Gen 12 are the same thing. So when, for example, the next generation of CPUs from Intel, which use Gen 12, you can essentially say it's using the XC architecture. Now I suspect, and I have not had this confirmed by Intel, but logically it just makes sense, that there will be some differences other than the obvious thing like the number of execution units between, let's say, the discrete GPU and the iGPU variants, but there will, you know, the basic underlying architecture is identical. So it's possible that maybe Raj Akodori is not hinting necessarily on the launch of uh, the discrete XE cards, but instead is kind of saying that there will be another product based upon the Gen 12 architecture, which will launch at that time. My personal opinion, though, is that we're probably going to see some type of announcement, maybe for them to say, hey, these cards are coming out in three months, and maybe for us to get a more detailed plan of what uh, Intel are doing, because that to me sounds more like think XE, like think about our plans. That kind of sounds more like what they're doing, but who knows? I'm actually super excited to see what Intel do in the discrete graphics. I really want a just a third player. Not that I'm actually unhappy with what AMD are doing right now. I'm actually super happy that AMD are being really competitive. They're bring it, really bringing the fight to NVIDIA. And actually, we've got a bit of NVIDIA news in just a moment. And obviously, that's forced NVIDIA's hand in launching the super series of cards. But clearly, a third player is only going to improve our choices as a customer. So I say bring it on Intel, especially if all of the rumors concerning the architecture and performance are true. One other thing related to Intel graphics, and this actually is a leak from Kamichi on Twitter. This all but confirms that Lakefield R will actually be based upon the Gen 12 architecture. According to Kamichi, these were uh, these references were found in a driver which was made public a couple of months ago but since has now been made unavailable because obviously intel did an oopsie and they didn't want this to become uh, public knowledge so what this essentially does is say that at the very least we know that lakefield will be using gen 12. and the final piece of intel news for this video although not the final news piece for the video and that concerns intel and their reaction to people's reaction of what they're saying they're reacting to if that sounds like gobbledygook well yeah th this is going to be one of those down the rabbit hole stories so if you remember cascade lake x has been rumored for some time right and one of the slides that baffled us when we first saw it was the price slash performance ratio that cascade lake x offered at the time many suspected that this was down to improvements uh, in the instruction set for deep learning and that type of thing. That was like one of the theories I had anyway. But no, we actually learned that it was because the Cascade Lake X CPUs, uh, Generation 10, are basically having a massive price cut. Uh, basically around 50% of the cost of the previous uh, Gen 9. So most people suspected, including myself, that the reason that this was done was because Intel were responding to AMD, right? So the most logical thing for us to say would be that AMD uh, put out the uh, Threadripper second generation. We know that the third generation is waiting in the wings. Just a quick reminder, once again, it's coming out in November, which is, well, the same release window as uh, Cascade Lake X. So the most logical thing is that Intel know that AMD have them beat in the core count, but AMD can be beaten in other ways. Like for example, once again, uh, deep learning, it looks like Cascade Lake X is gonna be really good. It looks like with the higher clock frequencies as well as some other improvements. You can also do some gaming in there. So uh, there are definitely gonna be usage cases for both scenarios, although we're gonna to have to wait for the third generation of Threadripper details. Anyway, I'm kind of stepping around the topic a bit just so that we have some context. So basically, that was the, the, the theory that Intel were lowering the price in reaction to AMD, but that's actually not the reason that Intel lowered the price, at least according to Intel. 
I hopefully pronounced this chap's name correctly. If so, I profusely apologize. But Frank Sequoia, who is the vice president and general manager of Intel's desktop workstation and channel group, recently had an interview with CRN. I'll, of course, link the uh, article in the description of the video, and I would encourage you to check it out. And he was asked why Intel decided to lower the price of Cascade Lake X of the 10th generation. And he said that this is not a reaction to AMD. This is an exact quote. The gap was so big for people at the top of our mainstream roadmap with processors like the Core i7 that they can't cross the chasm. Uh, he is, by the way, a 37-year-old Intel veteran, just for your FYI. So we brought those prices down so that those people could move up and enjoy higher performance. He also said that this is not related to AMD. And he said that the price cut is, quote, it's in service with my customer. Oh, and by the way, I believe AMD are going to be the ones responding to this versus us responding to them. Intel's 10 nm capacity is starting to ramp up as well as its 14 nm capacity and that's actually a comment from Intel themselves which is obviously good news in terms of pricing because the more products you can get onto store shelves it not only makes it easier for Intel because they don't have to worry about uh, you know just not being able to provide retailers the number of chips that customers are demanding, but it also directly makes it cheaper because, well, you no longer have retail gouging, uh, which would obviously also inflate the pricing. I don't necessarily 100% buy uh, the explanation that's being offered here by Intel. Um, I think it is partly reactionary, to be honest, which is fine. It's fine. I, I, I'm actually okay with you cutting your prices, Intel. That's cool. And I don't think it makes either product any worse or any less. Personally, I'm just looking forward to seeing what the products are capable of when we actually get them, when they're actually available to us. And I, I do think that this is going to be one of those situations where both sets of chips do have their place. Intel, at least according to, once again, this article, doesn't look like they're slashing the prices of their mainstream solutions either. I suspect that we will see price cuts, but in a different way. So what I kind of expect is that we see a 10 core CPU at roughly the same price as we have now with the i9-9900K and other CPUs are gonna continue down the stack because obviously they wanna put pressure on CPUs like the 3900 from AMD, the 3700 and so on and so on. But it will be fascinating to see exactly what happens in the mainstream segment as well. In the final piece of news for today, let's discuss NVIDIA. So NVIDIA's super series of GPUs has been met with mixed reception. A lot of people really happy that essentially it's brought down the price of the same level of performance. For example, the 2070 Super is basically on par with the 2080 Vanilla, but also a lot of people mad if they bought the cards at launch and then, well, they kind of feel screwed over. But as we all know, that's kind of the nature of technology. However, I'm not a super fan, haha, <laughs> of the naming scheme anyway, but it actually seems to have been confirmed that we will be seeing a GTX 1650 Super thanks to the ECC. This entry was discovered by Momomo over on Twitter, and indeed this particular uh, entry was a filing by Pallet. Uh, slight off topic, but I actually think Palette are one of those manufacturers which always seems to be, I don't know, just kind of f forgotten about, but they actually release really good products. Let me know your thoughts on Palette. Like, if you've had a Palette GPU, I've had a couple of theirs and they've always done pretty well, although that was a number of years ago, I will admit. So yeah, let me know your, your let me know your experiences with Palette. Uh, particularly the uh, RMA, RMA process, excuse me, because I've not actually had to return a card to Palette before. But anyway, so this does confirm that we will be seeing the GTX 1650 Super uh, from NVIDIA, and obviously this will most likely be there to counter uh, the, up, the newer, lower-end SKUs uh, based... And this particular series of cards will be, of course, designed to take on AMD's upcoming lower-end Narve GPUs.
Anyway, with all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, then the normal stuff, like, share, and comment and subscribe, because that helps us out a ton. You can also find us on social media, which of course is linked right down there in the description of the very video. And I will see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.